it's a struggle as a parent because you want your child to go to find their own voice. But sometimes when they find their own voice in what you thought was the wrong thing to do, <laughs> then it's always a big, a big challenge. careful of what you allow in your spirit die, especially in America. Tasmanian Devil for me was a really great window into parenthood and the struggles that one parent feels uh, in trying to guide, uh, you know, an adolescent child uh, or a young man at this point, really. Um, he's been living in the States uh, away from his son, who's in Nigeria. Uh, and he's working as a priest. And, you know, they always say, beware of the priest, preacher's daughter. Uh, but in this case, it's beware of the preacher's son. Because usually when somebody's brought up under strict guidelines, they want to rebel. And that's what the son wants to do. He wants to find his own wings and fly. Uh, and he finds comfort and guidance in the Black Greek fraternities. Uh, it just happens that the one that he joins is called the Tasmanian Devils. So I can imagine if there's a devil in the title and you're a priest, a father, to discover that, it's just gotta be a huge heartbreak. And so for me, it was just a really rich story, uh, yeah. So what did you do to prepare for this particular role, um, you know, as this father and, and kind of mixing a little tiny bit of maybe your parents' story because they, you know, are immigrants from another country, as am I, as, of, as are a lot of viewers that would be watching. Um, how did you prepare for that, as opposed to even maybe some of your other roles too? Yeah. This was close to home for me, because my actually my grandfather, my mom's uh, dad, was the first African archbishop to East Africa, from Uganda, Kenya, and Rwanda. Um, so I grew up in a religious household, uh, and there are other members in our family who were priests. So I was able to draw upon their stories uh, to sort of help me infuse this. So for me, it really felt personal um, and close to home uh, because of that experience. So that for me was like, yeah, there's other roles where I don't feel like I have that sort of connection or that personal connection. It's part of my family lore, but this one it was. Did you kind of think about you know, any of the real world connections to the, the, the existing Greek fraternities that you had? And did you have any actual feelings um, about that that you brought to the role? You said you're admiring from afar, but did you, obviously that wasn't your role. That wasn't, you know, the, the, the dad was really admiring <laughs> this Greek fraternity at all. Um, so how did you kind of balance that? Uh, well, in the script, he discovers uh, his son's pledge materials. Uh, by accident. Like he finds this book in the bag that says Tasmanian Devils. And so for a religious parent, for a priest, he just, his mind just goes to the worst. And he thinks that his son is somehow involved in some sort of satanic ritual or belief, or he just doesn't understand that there's any sort of good in what he's doing. Um, so <laughs> it was just, that's where this sort of comedy of errors happens because his son has actually found himself through the fraternity. Um, he's found his own voice. He's found his independence. Um, so for me personally, it's just a, it's a struggle as a parent because you want your child to go to find their own voice. But sometimes when they find their own voice in what you thought was the wrong thing to do, <laughs> then it's always a big, a big challenge. But in the end, he discovers that he, what he's done is not sort of satanic worshiping, it's, it's a fraternity. <laughs>